Hello, Andrew here. Welcome to lecture 10, the last lecture in the Using Creative Multimedia for Youth Engagement module. This lecture, we're going to kind of pull a few uh, strands together and look at developing multimedia policies for youth organizations and how that continues to come about, I suppose, because it's still kind of in its infancy in some, some regards. Um, yeah, so just step into it. As we talked about in the last lecture, we, we started to kind of expand on the, you know, a kind of a critical analysis of, of um, what a digital youth worker is and what it might entail and what need, what capacities it needs to fulfill. And again, I just want to kind of start off on that point again to talk about the, this policy document because there, it, it's all here in one sense of, you know, having a really vital first pass um, in the two years that it took to put this together. Um, and the recommendations are pretty valid with it. So we look at the, you know, taken from face-to-face -face traditional youth work into an online environment and, you know, what differences and what needs to kind of move and change with that. We discussed the agile mindset in the last, um, excuse me, the last lecture when it came to, you know, the, the kind of the kind of rethinking of what youth work is and rethinking of the skills and toolkits and skill sets that youth workers already have, but now to apply it towards digital skills in the digital domain. And in Baron that it's a case of, you know, um, you know, a lot of it is pretty similar in terms of it's uh, derived from traditional youth work. It's not like a new, a new, um, a whole new sort of skill profession that's come along really just to kind of underpin that again. Um, so we're just going to look at this definition again towards the definition of digital youth work and we'll take this one as, as good as, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just lean on that policy because it's trying to reinvent the wheel otherwise where this is quite comprehensive. Um, so we, we'll just kind of start from here. So we have this definition that we, you know, I read it in the last um, lecture. What I want to pick out here is the other piece that's here highlighted in, 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 in the middle here of digital youth work can happen in face-to-face -face situations as well in online environments or a mixture of the two. So we want to look at this in terms of, um, there's this, you know, whatever it used to be like a program session of say two hours that you'd have with a young person or a group uh, per week has now extended into like, you know, something a bit vaguer and broader as in it can last and work outside of, of that, which can be a really helpful support for some young people if that's what they need at any particular time, you know. Um, the other thing is just the next sentence of digital media and technology can be either a tool, an activity, or a content in youth work. So that other element that I wanted to talk about, and we're just going to touch on these here to see how that can come about. Uh, you know, it being a tool, an activity, or a content is a really interesting sort of look at that because you know the, the logical end of thinking about what digital media tech or digital youth work might be is sitting there with a lot of like really high power technology and you know a lot of people sitting scratching their heads figuring out how to use that where it can be as simple as just researching a set of facts on the internet can be a discussion point and raise a whole different end of it or indeed, just even learning how to use a search engine can be an activity in itself, you know. So there's any number of ways of looking at that um, in terms of the tool element of it to use it to build something, activity where you're discussing the thing um, or a content where you're kind of bringing more information towards a critical thinking model of having a conversation around what whatever it, that discussion may happen to be. So um, one other aspect to kind of to throw in there because uh, you know like agile mindset there's there, there appears that there's some sort of shift in the language that's happening um which is fair enough in terms of if we're going to rethink what we're what we're doing and how how we're doing it but um one other element here is this concept of like smarty work i think it's a uh, not the best choice of words really we just it implies that all other youth work isn't smart um but we get what we're getting at in terms of using innovative development of youth work encompassing digital youth work practice and including research quality and policy components okay so you know this term smart youth work is kind of just the the the, the, the term across and i'm sure we're going to hear a lot more of it where it's um 
it's you know digital media and digital technologies and digital youth work is incorporating into this sort of broader way of doing it um and again i just want to flag that again there's a link there with a set of policies which the that uh, the, the developing multimedia policy for youth organizations would have fed into this and that was one part that had gone in so i just thought it was uh, apt to flag it there's an eight page document there at the bottom of that pdf if you wanted to kind of read that and see what it's kind of covering um all very interesting stuff as i said just the terminology and choice of words probably not the most favorable but um it's all it's very interesting and does certainly indicate that there's been you know a, a, a serious amount of work given towards this one thing i want to kind of flag before going any further is um you know we can look at the word policy and think of it like um you know almost like a, a diktat of this is what you have to do um i've long as a youth worker and i'm sure all other youth workers would would, would vouch for being you know the, the, the vital part of the job is being an advocate for for young people below voting age mostly um who don't have any rights when it comes to this in terms of so they, you know they don't have that sort of legal right to kind of act on their decisions or you know their their informed choices with that so they need advocates to that end and this is where the youth this is a youth worker's job one way is to kind of foster that sort of critical thinking and you know growing resilience and being able to challenge themselves and the perceptions of the world and all those sorts of really good interesting things and the other was just a case of okay well what is available to you and who is saying it who, who is who is telling you that is the case i suppose you know and these are kind of other elements that we need to kind of we, we need to discuss so if we look at a policy and you know just to flag this sort of concept of a top-down policy where it's come from like central EU sort of government working groups down and to be applied to a lot of young people is probably not the healthiest or most ideal way of doing that in terms of it being hard and fast and you know sort of uh, catering for everyone all the time where in all the reality like the natural reality is this is as I would have said elsewhere is like you have younger people being the first and earliest adopters of any new technology that comes along yet paradoxically you have no rights towards how they interact with that. So we see there's a bit of a kind of a standoff in terms of what might be deemed appropriate or acceptable or what can kind of go along those lines. Again, we've talked about like deviant behavior earlier as well. And, you know, these sorts of ideas where things can kind of become very fear-based or causes for anxiety very, very quickly with that. So what I'm going to look at in terms of policy is just it, rather than it being this sort of hard kind of cold thing it's a case of just a policy being you know a really r robust and um rigorous set of recommendations and different sorts of uh you know and to show that things have been all fully considered and then youth workers can go from that on a confident point that uh, from a confident position that they're once they're aware of all that and there's a policy or there's an element in an organization or in broader sort of government that is going to catch issues so you can com confidently kind of keep doing the work in a digital domain that's all i'm really going to take it from so rather than it being this top down thing i prefer a bottom-up model of like young people arriving and meeting with this and the policy not really being an issue in terms of it shouldn't be an issue because once you're once you're versed and you're familiar with what it is you can kind of um guide things accordingly but at the same breath fostering a critical thinking model and you know addressing and accepting that challenge which young people will throw up constantly about appropriate uses and acceptable uses of new technologies or their expression of the same so just to kind of flag that you know that it's a, there is a bit of a difference i'm not going to look at policy as like some hard thing it's just a case of here's a set of frameworks and guidelines which have been fully considered and that's the best way i think to look at it so we look at the recommendations that come out of this policy common understanding of digital youth work. Member states should consider the working definition of digital youth work and their understanding and development of digital youth work. Okay, so even there, you know, we're looking at, we're trying to define it. Okay, that's fine. We have a definition of it. It's broad enough and, you know, wordy enough that it, it includes a lot of things, but it shouldn't be, you know, it mightn't be everything. And just being aware of that and as a case of how that's being, um, 
ahead of being uh, taken on board and considered, but we do need a sort of a consistent sort of frame of reference and uh, language to operate from. Every youth worker should understand the importance of digital youth work and be able to address digital issues in their work. Okay, so that's what all this is about, really including this course, making sure that we understand the importance and significance of it, we're aware of it. Youth work should embrace technological developments and support young people to develop the skills, competences, and courage to actively shape digital technologies in society. Again, the, you know, the last one's probably, it's quite alarming how it's come on that quickly, where normally it'd be a case of preparing people to go elsewhere to learn the competences and skills to do it because everything was like a higher end. If it was a case of becoming a plumber or a carpenter or an electrician or something where you wouldn't have that in-house. But with digital technologies and the kind of dematerializing of things, and everything kind of you know arriving inside a smartphone or a computer or a small set of sensor devices you do have that capacity to do that now so it's something for youth workers to kind of step up to um is the issue there every member state um every member state should have a plan for developing resource and digital youth work as an integral part of their youth policy young people and youth organizations should be consulted and engaged in the development and implementation of this plan okay so there is this is how it gets really interesting straight away if you're looking at a bottom up approach and including young people in any sort of plans uh, or any whatever the engagement is you know and it, basically this sort of policy becoming an extension of youth led um projects i suppose and it's just a case of for them to have the confidence, the wherewithal, and the you know the knowledge to be able to apply, apply themselves towards something which is a bit more complex, and applying to a, a broader number of people, and to do all that with the support and you know the knowledge, knowing that they've, 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 they've it'll be a fully informed decision that they're doing with that, and for all that to arrive at a EU poli policy, um, you know that will is bespoke in terms of it fits the young people who in the in the organization status suits that's probably the best you could ask for every member state should provide strategic financial investment in digital youth work resources should be allocated to youth worker training development of innov innovative digital tool youth work method methodology working time infrastructure and device technologies to be used with young people okay so again we can see that that sort of does any how there's only so much that the, the youth worker or the individual youth organizations can take on and there's an amount of that where it comes to in particular with strategic financial investment towards that is something which is a bit you know it's it's whoever is controlling the purses with that and making sure that they're making that available for that training and upskilling and like a different culture of it to come about but overall to be open to all those things is the issue and you know another end of it is the financial aspect of it um, it is less and less the more we go along that it's like again with the sort of dematerializing of things um, open source freeware different things you know there's a there's a certain sort of entry level of what you need to get working and going on this it doesn't have to be like you can't do it because the budget isn't there yet um, but in saying that you know the financial investment in that is the it, it, it is is a key thing in terms of just you know um organizations or government departments putting their money where their mouth is really and delivering for young people what they need um and that's just one other side of that digital youth work should be incorporated into youth worker training national youth work occupational standards and youth worker competence standards okay so you know and this we, we step through this and i'm going to just pick it off in terms of like particular towards an irish model where i'll I'll quote how that has, I'm going to say how that's come about and then right down to like deriving a policy for one particular youth organization. That's where this lecture is going to go. I should have said that to start, but anyway, that's where we're going to go. Digitalization and young people's digital culture should be taken into account when designing youth work policy at local, national and European level. Okay. So again, it's a case of, you know, how much can be fed into that and as opposed to what's the, the, the difference between doing and saying, I suppose, is what we're looking at there, you know, and it's a case of um, if you ask young people how they think and feel about things, it can become a, quite a very, if you ask anyone, never mind young people, it can become quite a varied and like sort of unspecific kind of thing where it can only arrive as words on a page where the beauty of a policy should really be so you have a framework for which activity is happening within that and then you know that that's going to challenge the boundaries of the policy 
and the policy might need to kind of be aware that there's challenges coming from X, Y, Z in relation to it and that all delivering kind of, you know, a higher level of, you know, the, 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 the work, um, you know, um, speaking for itself in terms of project-based work or whatever youth work might be. And then likewise, the policy becoming a real thing and a flexible thing, like a muscle rather than just some sort of stale set of words. Um, and bringing young people towards something like that is, um, is, is an interesting, is the interesting thing to do. So ensure digital youth work incorporates an inclusive approach, recognizing the barriers to participation and digital engagement. Um, yeah, as we kind of spoke on that last lecture about the recognizing the barriers being a vital part and just seeing where it kind of cuts off and the inclusivity of it all being an interesting thing. So like looking at people's media literacy, their literacy with technologies, and just having, you know, a framework and everything set up for any number of entry levels towards this. You know, like the reality is here, if you've, <laughs> even, even on the scale of like what you might look at 10 year olds being able to achieve and their media literacy towards these sorts of technologies. And if you were to take all that back 20 or 30 years to the average adult now, um, which is probably one of the issues when in youth work maybe, but um, it, that, that, that um, sort of, the distance between the top and the bottom of threshold of like who is like literate and you know adept at it and who is like really struggling with it is so much thinner than it's ever been before and can be and there's never been more tools or more ubiquitous environments to kind of fix and adjust those sorts of issues for young people to just make sure that everyone can be provided for and there's no one being left at the back of the class to use that sort of analogy um so, you know, and that's, that, that, that has to come in, like that inclusive approach has to come in at the policy level, but also in terms of just practically delivering, um, you know, skill sets and different activities to young people. And again, I'm just to flag that it's never been easier to do that, I suppose. That's all I'm really trying to get out there. Youth work should make use of technology and pedagogical practices to increase access and break down barriers for all young people to, to participation in society. Okay, so, you know, that's, we've talked about there. Digital young youth work shall respect the safety and privacy of all young people and equip both youth workers and young people with the necessary competences to safeguard the rights of young people online. Okay, so this is kind of one of the big taboo reasons why it probably hasn't come to pass uh, in the next to the technology we have already, because we have social media, we have online sort of engagement or activity, but just not in the youth work, digital youth work environments. Um, and there's a certain element of fear and anxiety and apprehension towards that. So that's where, you know, what I find the policy, you know, broader sort of communication policies for, for organizations at an organization level really needs to be in a language that the youth workers and the staff understand and that young people have kind of provided for and taken that stake in the responsibility in that as well, because that's where it's going to, that's that share kind of halves the burden and helps with doubles the communication. Knowledge and evidence. Development of digital youth work should be evidence-based. To ensure quality in digital youth work systems should be developed for evaluating its impact, reach, and effectiveness. Okay, so that's, you know, just illustrating youth work, which we talked about elsewhere. The other beauty of that being that you're actually making artifacts that can be shared or, you know, templates or innovation that can be shared elsewhere as you can borrow from someone else. And then you've got like a whole set of tools, grammar, illustrations to kind of show other young people who are totally new to this. And it's in a language and in a form and in an environment that they're familiar with. Continuous academic research on young people's digital uses and cultures is needed to ensure youth work is meeting the needs of young people in digital age. The research should be done both on national and on European level. Fair enough, okay, the academic research will continue to happen. Um, the other side of that being, how much, you know, it's this issue again at the top down and the bottom up, especially from an academic research point of view of seeing what you want to see, as opposed to young people being able to express themselves in whatever shape, form that they might want to do that and just build different, new, vibrant cultures with this sort of stuff. So there's, you know, a little bit of a pull and a little bit of a push when it comes to these issues. As digitalization is a global phenomenon, it is imp imperative to facilitate knowledge exchange on digital youth work and young people's digital cultures on international level, which has never been easier. Initiatives should be supported at local, national and European level to share knowledge and practice cross-sectoral knowledge 
exchange should be encouraged to promote innovative thinking. Okay, so, you know, that's kind of not really in the hands of uh, youth workers or young people to, to come about with in, in the obvious sense of like, you know, that having to be a broader sort of understanding of pan sort of sharing or across international sort of frameworks of, of how this can be done. But in terms of, you know, it does still fit in with a traditional model of like, say, youth uh, exchange trips, whatever, or all these sorts of, um, you know, there are, there are initiatives and there are versions of this that have happened before. And in terms of digital cultures, it's never been easier that a lot of that can happen online. So, we, you know, that's all we really need to say about that. So there are the recommendations from the European level. I'm just going to take it one step down to the, the last document that would have really spoke to this end at a national level. And that would be the Screeningers International Research Project using ICT digital and social media and youth work. Um, and this would have been in, where are we now, 2004, I believe. Um, it would have been in 2014, not 2004. Uh, and an international seminar that took place in Dublin around that. And it's a partnership between Austria, Denmark, Finland, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, funded by Erasmus. Um, and these are the core recommendations to come out of that. So it was kind of like, you know, a lot of this would have fed into that broader 21 nation member state um, European policy that would have happened. But here we've got like four um, recommendations, which are at varying levels if we really look at it now into how much of that's been taken up and really been sort of uh, really running with it in terms of the at a national level in Ireland in particular to develop a national digital plan for the youth sector. Design and delivery of bespoke and sp or specialist training on the use of ICT, social and digital media for youth workers. Creating networking and information opportunities for youth workers to include annual and regional events. Establish an ICT support unit for the youth work sector. So, you know, as I said, that's in terms of from a government level, we have you know, um, in terms of better outcomes, brighter futures, and this sort of it, kind of loose aspirational, um, you know, uh, policy recommendations about like upskilling and young people and including digital technologies as like a vital core in their education is where we're really at with that. With that it's still very aspirational. In terms of the a plan, as I said, most of this would have fed into the to, into the, the European working group, but also, um, you know, in terms of different opportunities and grants for annual and regional events for youth workers, you know, between the Creative Tech Fest, uh, there was an international conference of games and youth work with, between LIT and uh, Youth Work uh, Ireland and Tipperary in particular. Uh, and those would have been, you know, annual events, you know, it would have come up where it's, we, we have this sort of shared experience of what's been going on in digital domains with that. Um, apart from that, we're still a little bit off the, um, off the, off the pace. And it might have been an anticipation, I hope it was in anticipation of this EU document that was going to kind of um, provide all those sort of groundings that are needed. Um, so the language and the grammar around it is still a little bit sort of, you know, it's, it hasn't really landed in, in an Irish context in particular. Um, in particular next to like, you know, the best practice versions of it in countries like Finland, where it's like, you know, super advanced uses of that. So I just wanted to flag that really. I'm just, I'm just thinking out of my head if there's anything that I'm leaving out in terms of other sort of... Um, versions of that or what what might be left out but overall just say for a document that's been produced in 2014 with those sort of recommendations they haven't really been taken up in any great stretch it is you know there's a master's project in lit sorry and then in minute as well with creative with the tech fest there is a digital media element in terms of youth work training so they're quite they're vital in in, in that sense in terms of like they've gone into the into the training but just in terms of in terms of broader youth work and in in youth centres and youth settings, how much of this has really come to pass uh, hasn't hasn't really landed just yet. So what I want to do next, um, I'm just going to go through the 
elements of a communications policy. And this is, you know, in absence of broader policies for the last few years, I, I, I myself had pulled one together for the youth organization, Briar and Ballymun that I was working in. Um, and this was out of necessity, really, just to kind of, you know, for for staff, for both staff and young people to kind of understand boundaries and, and to really get a, an understanding of how this could come about. So as I said, it was, you know, delivering looking at like different international versions of it between finland and scotland in particular and england like there's a bbc one say for example um but a scottish model that was really interesting and taking all that and kind of putting that with more generic sort of policy communications policy stuff for ngo sectors in ireland um that's what had me arrive at this and it's by no means conclusive i really hope it's replaced by something a bit more sort of solid and vetted by you know a team of people that would work on it and have delivered a communications policy that can be like tailored for individual organizations but i just want to do a rundown of the elements that would go into that and how um how that might add up. I'm not going to go in detail with a lot of this because you know you can kind of read these off and a lot of them just make sense really. Some of it's more generic in terms of it would apply to any sort of organization. And then I just got up to particularisms in terms of yeah, relating to young people in particular. So in terms of email, just being used for work, being appropriate, not sort of, you know, um, not as a substitute for face-to-face -face communication confidentiality um def not being defamatory around that um and then whatever about contracts and then the other side of it like you know unauthorized or inappropriate behavior being bullying or harassment and proper use chain letters gambling the likes of that okay so that's all pretty generic stuff so far it, internet likewise just to be accessed during work hours you know this could kind of feed into any sort of policy document of like um anyone in an office environment I suppose sit in front of a computer for any amount of time uh, and likewise unauthorized access and download on pornography or illegal obscene material download and so unauthorized software and appropriate levels of personal communication um, and just you know personal sort of things like online shopping or holidays banking whatever just keeping that to a reasonable level you can, you know, I'll put up the version of the policy that I would have done overall just to kind of show you how, you know, for, for organizations to be taken on this level to kind of catch everything and, you know, kind of when a new member of staff, for example, or a volunteer comes to an organization that they're given this to read, you're instantly instilling that sort of best practice conduct around um, digital technologies and their uses within your organization and that's all i really want to flag here is that that's the vital first step in terms of growing confidence with how you relate to the young people online or in a youth work environment around online sort of technologies and services so computer software just virus protection not downloading anything sort of inappropriate um games freeware issues without any consent of management or you know whoever look after your it um, you know, if you're purchasing applications, I suppose, and that's just elements of that to just kind of make sure that that's all appropriate and vetted and it's, it's relating back to like whoever would look after the IT for, for a particular organization. So this kind of where it gets a little bit more particular for youth work, um, contacting young people by email or social networking so young people under 16 cannot give permission themselves for their contact details to be shared so parents and guardians must give written permission on their behalf this means that if you email anyone under the age of 16 you should have written permission from their parent or care to do so the written permission should also be in the form of a consent box ticked on young people's enrollment forms and updated on their crm and um, think about the content of any messages that you might send once all that's in place Ensure that you use appropriate language. Try not to include any words or phrases that could be misinterpreted. If you're sending images, make sure that they are appropriate. Ensure that any external hyperlinks you include lead to appropriate content. And always copy another adult into any message that you send to a member under the age of 16. Okay, so there's, just, there's, there's different kind of safety um, mechanisms to be put in place as best practice. And again, things that like aren't too unfamiliar when you relate it back to like traditional youth work and just kind of best practice and conduct around minors 
um, you know, in public and in sort of more private settings as well like that, where you would make sure that there's other staff members either with you or aware of that. So there's a kind of, you know, just, and again, all this does is just remove any element of doubt or anything kind of any worry and allow you to get on the front foot and be confident about the services that are being delivered once this is kind of all adding up. Um, sharing photos and video. Photos or videos of young people under 16 should not be uploaded onto general websites, general social networking sites or spe specialist media sharing sites like YouTube that are unrelated to specific activities. Photos or videos of young people under 16 participating in activities should be uploaded onto organization websites, organizational social media networking sites or media sharing tools like YouTube once all consents of all young people have been checked and approved. So likewise, you know, you need to get permission to take photos of young people and then permissions to publish those photos. So, you know, that sort of building, that sort of consent form is, is I'll put a, a draft of that up as well. But again, that's kind of induction when young people come into your service or into your center in the first place for a guardian or a parent, a parent or a guardian to, um, to be aware of those capacities of, of what goes on in the center. And then for all those kind of concerns or worries to address, which parents have and rightly have about a lot of the stuff about how their how their children are being represented online or you know different environments that they might be kind of the, the images or video or likenesses of them could be shown within. So it's just again have it all up front and official and a very a, a robust policy to kind of go forward with is the vital way going. Photos or videos of young people under 16 participating in special group one-off events activities should not be uploaded to general websites. So again, this is just kind of streamlining and focusing um, content, images, anything to where it needs to go and not let it be taken out of context or not letting it be kind of shared in another way or being easily accessed by people who might want to do, to, to, to do anything malicious with that. So again, you just want to have all these sort of best practice um, you know, steps and, and safety mechanisms incorporated. Uh, if you do want to share photos or video of young people under the age of 16 participating in activities on the organization sites, make sure you have the written permission uh, from their parent or carer before going ahead and avoid mentioning their full names or including other information that could inadvertently reveal their identities. So again, you know, you just want to build that up. And, I, I, you know, it's even for this sort of stuff, to be once the consents are in and everything's up, that this can then become learning tools with young people about how best to use that. Because once you go online, you're about an editor and a publisher. And there's a certain responsibility that comes with those two things rather than, um, you know, being it just being something to be to, to, that's not to be thought about on those regards really so treat others as you want to be treated likewise there's some sort of you know an important sort of thing to underpin and stress with young people when it comes to conducting themselves online and um, making and communicating with friends online ensure that young people are aware that new friends who they meet so this is this first view kind of spec towards the young people you, friends who they meet online are really strangers so they need to be careful who they trust the only way someone can physically harm you is if they're you're both in the same location so to be completely safe encourage young people not to meet friends they have met online in person if they do decide to meet someone who's they've connected contacted online it's important to notify a parent or guardian or take someone along and meet in public in daytime so you know these are, again just they're things that do and will continue to come up and in the case of that awareness and giving giving people young people that sort of um scope in which to look at this is a vital one encourage young people to look out for their friends too and to tell a responsible adult if they think a friend is at risk so this sort of encouraging healthy and fostering healthy conversations about things that are like are you know they appear like individual concerns or individual individual anxieties or stresses where they're actually shared ones. So wherever I can do in a youth worker job, just pull that back into the shared experience of this and make sure that they're looking out for each other. Because once that kind of happens, then, you know, there's a, there's just a healthier peer model going on there and best practice of how to engage online, to flag any sort of issues or errors or things that don't look right. And this is a safety and numbers element with that, I suppose. Encourage caution when using chat rooms. It is possible to get 
away from an unpleasant situation in chat room by logging out or by changing your screen name. Okay, so just being aware of like the little fail saves for like that. Make sure participants know how to save a copy of their conversation. This may help if they want to report something they feel uncomfortable about to the chat room provider or moderator. Okay, so you know, they're just simple, uh, you know, basic computer skills interface settings of like how to save a conversation or how to take a screenshot and these sorts of things which are just simple tools to kind of they can be shown to young people very very quickly and it becomes something which um you know it empowers them essentially that they know that they can record and document things that have gone on should they ever need to do that schedule and facilitate regular group sessions with all young people who use the services to ensure they're aware of the need to be safe online and also encourage good use of the internet and media literacy skills. So it's not like a one-off thing. This is like part of the culture that has to come in that way, where you're constantly banging the drum and a reminder, um, you know, doing it maybe in inductions with young people who are, who are new to the organization, but also just kind of refreshers for older young people or even taking their lived experiences and feeding that back into the into like shared sessions if that is appropriate for the, or they, they want to kind of, you know, talk about how they dealt with something which appeared difficult online, you know, and just those sorts of things of fostering a healthy shared experience of how to do this stuff online in a safe, in a safe way. And that they're kind of informed and they're aware that there are certain things that they can do. And staff and volunteer personal use of social network. And so on the other side, you know, this is where youth work is kind of unique in that sense of, you know, what we have is kind of a more corporate office based policy about access to the Internet. Then this other side of like almost like parents about, you know, assuring that um, you know, how young people can be safe with their friends and with each other online. And now we've got the in-between of a staff volunteer interacting with a young person in these environments and how that can be um a poli you know towards a policy for that to be like confident and safe and assured way you know use of social networking during working hours should be treated in the same way as taking personal phone calls this activity will only be allowed outside working time except for exceptional circumstances okay so the, the operative word here being like the personal side of this use of personal social networking as opposed to the um organizational one all work information is confidential discussion or disclosure of such via social networking will be treated as a disciplinary matter. So, you know, just being aware of the boundaries again and what is a good professional practice. And it's a bit of a, it's, you know, it does need to be flagged because, you know, if you're using the same, if you have a shorthand, and this is probably the agile mindset again, a good way to kind of introduce this. If, you, if you're a, 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 a youth worker, but have a new person who accesses social media in their own private life, you have a shorthand of how the technology works and you have a certain language that you just talk within that. So that needs to be removed from a professional environment, much like you would in real life. And that just needs to be kind of foregrounded and reminded really that, that there is a different approach to that and it needs to be taken as such. Online discussion or personal views regarding work issues or fellow staff, young people, volunteers, etc., can be serious threat to team cohesion and morale. Therefore, you're advised not to do that. So again, it's just talking about boundaries, really, you know, and that's just the issue there. You want to make sure that it's healthy and like, you know, progressive and inclusive, really, and just like, you know, and thoughtful. And, you know, all those things are kind of going into it. And under no circumstances, befriend a young person who you work with on your own personal networking sites. Should a young person add you as a friend, you need to discuss with them that it is not appropriate for you to do so. However, refer them to, profesh to a professional page that can link that that they can link up with the staff members. So again, this is much for the organization to have those capacities in place where there is like a you know a a a, a work page or a broader one where there's a number of like youth workers accessing it rather than like individuals. And this all just kind of removes that sort of um any ambiguity or you know chance chances that this might be you know become inappropriate in any way and it's just something that you just want another safety mechanism in there and it's for young people to understand those sorts of boundaries is the other issue regularly check your security settings and privacy make pe many people believe their site is well protected until you check it for yourself uh, your site should be completely secure from people accessing information that you have not authorized okay so that's you know just rules for life really but also just in terms of 
you know, just being mindful and having it in your work practice and how you conduct yourself and maintain a healthy boundaries and a professional practice, all being the vital tools here. Um, mobile phones and Skype. Certain operations that may be performed on mobile phones uh, breach organization rules and procedures. You must understand that sending of text messages or digital images that are or could be deemed offensive is strictly prohibited. Young people under 16 cannot give permission for their contact details to be shared. Parents and guardians must give written permission on their behalf. This means that if you text or Skype anyone under the age of 16, you should have written permission from their parent or guardian to do so. Think about the content of any message you send, much like with the email. Um, ensure that any external hyperlinks are pro are, 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 do not lead to inappropriate content. Always copy other, uh, another adult into any message that you send to a member under the age of 16. The photographing or filming of fellow employees, volunteers, participants, visitors, or any member of the public without their consent may breach an individual's right to privacy and could in certain circumstances constitute Harassment. Okay, so you know, this is just rules for life really being applied and reapplied in a youth work setting. It is against the principles of the organization for any person to be harassed by a mobile phone or Skype and will not be tolerated. Should you be found to do this, yeah, there are consequences. Okay, so you know, this I'll upload the, the whole document, but I just want to give you an idea of like that sort of spectrum of things, some things which are kind of a little bit um just administrative other ones that are a bit sobering and other ones which are re it's a really helpful and useful frameworks to have in place when it comes to um you know uh how to how to conduct and relate and interact with young people in social media and that's all we really get want to get at there so that's pretty much brings us to the end of this module um Thank you for listening, tuning in. Some of the earlier lectures were a lot longer than I had expected, but you know, trying to do pocketed histories of feminism and race discourse in media is no no easy task. But mostly, I hope you got something from all of that. Um, and you know, as you said, we're going to continue to build up the resource tools and the community of practice around this. So, and it's for you to kind of start contributing all that back as well, because it's just going to be the shared experience that's going to really have this come to pass. Now we've got really interesting, strong um, policy documents arriving from years of research from the people who know and pull in all these sorts of best practices of it. It's a really interesting, exciting time and it's long overdue um, for, you know, these type, this, this approach to youth work to be fully, um, you know, kind of in the offing. And yourselves taking on this master's course to 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 uh to to do all that are now the kind of the vanguard of it as well so i really look forward to seeing uh all the work the great work that kind of comes around in the back of this all the kind of that sort of healthy critical thinking models being fostered and different sort of takes on that and because they'll invariably lead to really interesting and diverse projects which are unique and memorable to young people and giving them like really interesting uh, life experiences at, at, at a younger age and preparing them for early adulthood and the rest of their lives. So um, all those good things combined. But mostly thank you very much for, for listening. Um, and if you any questions whatsoever, please feel free to email me and I'll get back to you um, accordingly. I'm, I'm sure I'll see you in one of the webinars very, very soon. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.